We have been studying about the greatest imitator of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is none other than the devil himself. We have seen that God or Jesus Christ is a king and the devil is a counterfeit king. Jesus Christ is God and the devil is a counterfeit God. Jesus Christ is light and the devil is counterfeit light. And the Godhead consists of three persons, a trinity, and the devil uh, comes up with a counterfeit trinity. Now the devil does all these things in order to keep people in deception. One of the greatest tools that the devil uses against mankind is deception. And that's what he did with Eve in the beginning. He deceived her into disobeying God. So the devil uses deception to keep unsaved people in a blind condition so that they do not see the truth about salvation in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he tries to deceive Christians by keeping them in darkness about the truth when it comes to sound doctrine and sound living. Today we are going to see how the devil is a counterfeit Jesus Christ. The devil uh, covets the position of Jesus Christ more than any other person of the Godhead because he always wanted to be like Jesus Christ. He wanted the position that Jesus Christ has in the Trinity and he always wanted the position that God had conferred on his son Jesus Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And today we're going to look at how he is a how the devil is a counterfeit Jesus Christ. Firstly, let us look at the earthly name that the second person of the Godhead was given. That is Jesus. Jesus is the earthly name given to the second person of the Godhead. God manifest in the flesh is Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 verse 25 says, And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. That's the name given to the second person of the Trinity. Now in Acts chapter 4, this is what the Bible says in verses 10 and 12. Firstly, verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby ye must be saved. So salvation is in the name of Jesus Christ alone, the earthly name of the Son of God. And the devil hates this name more than any other name. And the devil will try everything he can to counterfeit this name so that people would not believe in the true Jesus Christ for their salvation, but would be led astray to trust a false Jesus. That's right. There is a true Jesus Christ and there is a false Jesus. The true Jesus is the Son of God born of the Virgin Mary, as we have read about uh, his birth in Matthew chapter 1. He is born of a virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit. So that's the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who gives salvation to everyone who trusts in his name. And we are going to look a little bit more about that a little later. But the devil immediately comes in and tries to counterfeit this name, Jesus. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which we have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So Paul makes this very clear that there is in another Jesus. These are not my words. These are the words of the Apostle Paul. Another Jesus. There is another spirit. And there is another gospel. And this is the work of the devil. That's not the work of God. That's what the devil does to counterfeit the true Jesus. Now, among the charismatics, they have this another Jesus that we are talking about. What do I mean by that? The charismatic Jesus, which the charismatic preachers preach, 
is a sort of a perverted Jesus. He is more of a lover boy or a playboy than the savior of all mankind. This Jesus of the Charismatics is a Jesus who always talks about love. You see, when a preacher preaches always about the love of God, it's lopsided preaching. That's not biblical preaching. The Bible not only talks about the love of God, it also talks about the holiness, the justice, the wrath of God against all sinners and against all sin, the judgment of God that is coming, that is coming upon this world because of His righteousness and His judgment. So, the Jesus that is preached by these charismatics can never get angry. He is a Jesus who always loves and who does nothing else but love. He is a perverted Jesus. He is another Jesus, not the Jesus Christ of the Holy Scriptures. So that's why I said that the Jesus of the Charismatics is another Jesus. So here you have the Charismatic who preach another Jesus. Uh, among the Charismatics, the name of Jesus or the earthly name of Jesus is overemphasized. They always talk about Jesus. They don't even use the full title of Jesus Christ. He, the full title is Jesus Christ the Lord. That is his full title. But they always talk about Jesus. And they also talk about Jesus of Nazareth. And you must be very, very careful about that. These people, when they preach about Jesus, they, uh, they try to prove to the people that they are speaking by the Holy Spirit. So what do they do? They say, Jesus is Lord. They always keep saying this phrase, Jesus is Lord. And you may ask me, what is the problem with that phrase? Well, there is a problem. Now, the reason why they say Jesus is Lord in order to prove that they are speaking by the Spirit is because of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 3. <clears throat> Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Because of this verse which says no man can say Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Ghost, they keep repeating this phrase, Jesus is Lord. But there is something drastically wrong with that phrase, Jesus is Lord. Listen very carefully. Now in this passage that we have just read, it says, firstly, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. But you see, the passage is not talking about a verbal confession at all. And I will explain that a little bit more. But they say Jesus is Lord because of this passage. But you see, that is also the confession of devils. In Philippians chapter 2 verses 10 and 11, we know that there is coming a time when every knee shall bow before Jesus Christ and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's the devil's confession. Uh, you know, it says that uh, the things that are in heaven, the things on earth, things under the earth, everybody, everything in this universe will confess. And that is specifically a reference to unsaved people and to the devils of hell. So the charismatic confession that Jesus is Lord is also the devil's confession. Always remember that. They forget that in this passage, even the devils make the same confession. Now let me explain 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3 a little bit more for you to understand what that passage is actually saying. Like I've said, it is not at all talking about making a verbal confession. Anybody, even a demon-possessed man, can say that Jesus is Lord. That's not proof that a man is speaking by the Holy Spirit just because he says Jesus is Lord. <clears throat> what this verse means is this, that if a man is speaking by the Holy Spirit, that means if the Holy Spirit is giving words to a man to speak, that man can never say Jesus is accursed. And the reason for that is because it's the Holy Spirit who is giving words to that man to speak. Like for example, when Peter stood up to speak by the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, it is the Holy Spirit who gave him the words to speak. And he spoke as the Spirit gave him utterance. So also with all the apostles who uh, gave us the scripture. 
But it doesn't mean that any man uh, who says Jesus is Lord is speaking by the Holy Ghost. And the second part of this verse says, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Any man, whether saved or unsaved, can use his mouth to say Jesus is the Lord. Nothing can stop a person from saying that. But you see, in this verse, it means that only the Holy Spirit can help a man to believe that truly Jesus is the Lord and help him to confess that Jesus is the Lord. So, these charismatics who keep saying Jesus is Lord because of this verse do not even understand this verse. It's got nothing uh, to do with making a verbal confession that Jesus is Lord. But that's not the issue, uh, that's not the only issue there. The other thing is, notice they say, Jesus is Lord. But that's not what that verse is saying. Look at that verse more carefully. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3. In the second part it says, And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord. There is no the in the charismatic confession that Jesus is Lord. You see the word the is very important there. He is the absolute Lord. He is the Lord. And they fail to say that and they deceive people by saying, Jesus is Lord. And they say, look, we have the Holy Spirit. That's why we are able to confess that Jesus is Lord. The devils will confess will, that Jesus is Lord. But the Christian says that Jesus is the Lord. He is the absolute master and Lord of this whole universe. So this is the another Jesus preached by the charismatics. It is not the Jesus of the Holy Scriptures. Now, this verse, 1 Corinthians 12, 3, is not saying that everyone who calls Jesus Lord is saved. We know that. Even an unsaved person can call Jesus Lord. It's very easy to understand this. You don't need the Holy Spirit inside you to call Jesus Lord with your mouth. But in order to believe that He is Lord and confess with all your heart that He indeed is the Lord, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and as the Lord. Look at Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 and 22. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? If you sit down and think about these words of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will understand that all these miracles and prophecies and healings and tongues uh, among the charismatics are not proof that they are saved, are not proof that those things are from God. In fact, if you study the scriptures, you will understand that in this dispensation that we are living in, all these things are not there. Those are the signs of the apostles. We don't have apostles today. All the apostles today, who claim, you know, men and women who claim to be apostles, are false apostles. And uh, in the book of Revelation, Jesus very clearly talks about those false apostles. The devil imitates, the devil counterfeits everything that God does. And uh, if Jesus is God's Christ and God's uh, only begotten son who came into the world to save mankind, then the devil immediately starts preaching another Jesus so that people would not believe in the one true savior of all mankind. So you have among the charismatic specially this another Jesus being preached. And you must be careful about that. Just because a preacher gets up and preaches in the name of Jesus does not mean he is preaching the true Jesus Christ of the scriptures. Then you have another Jesus among the Mormons as well. Uh, the Jesus of Mormons is uh, the spirit brother of Lucifer. Of course, the Mormons theology is all so messed up. We don't, uh, we don't even want to get into it right now, but the Jesus of the Mormons has multiple 
multiple wives and children. Of course, the early elders of the Mormon religion thought that Jesus had multiple wives and children in order to justify polygamy. But later on, of course, they disagree. Some of them disagree on this point. But still, basically, the teachings of the Mormons is that Jesus had multiple wives and children. That's not the Jesus of the scriptures. That is another Jesus. Of course, then you have the Catholic Jesus. Now, this is the most dangerous among them. The Catholic Jesus, the another Jesus of the Roman Catholic Church, uh, cannot be approached except through his mother, Mary. Remember that the Roman Catholics believe that the second person of the Trinity is Jesus Christ. But remember this also, that the Jesus Christ of the Catholic Church is another Jesus. He's not the Jesus of the Scriptures. And they believe that the, the, uh, the Jesus they preach can only be approached through another mediator called Mary, supposedly his mother. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, we know the Bible says, There is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Only one mediator. And that's the Jesus of the scriptures. The Jesus of the Catholic Church is another Jesus. And you must beware of him. Now, if you look at the depiction of Roman Catholic artists of Jesus Christ, you know, in the paintings that they have, you always have a Jesus Christ with either blonde hair or with uh, brown hair. He looks like an Irishman. He doesn't look like the Jesus Christ of the scriptures at all. You can go back and check it out. The Roman Catholic paintings of the supposed Jesus Christ is always uh, of a man with golden hair or brown or red hair. But look at what the Bible says in Song of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 11. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. The color of Jesus' hair at his first coming is black in color because Jesus was born as a Jew. And Jews are Asians and Asians don't have blonde hair or reddish brown hair. He had black hair at the first coming. And look at what the Bible says at his second coming. Uh, in Revelation 1.14, this is how he looks. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. The first time he came, his hair was black as a raven. The second time he comes back, at the end of the tribulation, his hair is white as wool. That's the color of the hair of the Lord Jesus Christ of the scriptures. But the Catholic Church paintings of the, this Jesus is that of another Jesus, not the Jesus of the scriptures. It is very sad that when you walk into the homes of some so-called born-again Christians, there you have these pictures of Jesus Christ. What a shame that these born-again Christians, so-called, so-called Protestant Christians, so-called Bible-believing Baptists also have seen that, have these pictures of this Roman Catholic depiction of Jesus Christ, which is not a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ of the scriptures, but another Jesus. Let me say this, even if we did have the exact picture of Jesus Christ, as he was when he came the first time, you should not be keeping any pictures at all. The Bible is against having images and pictures, and uh, that amounts to idolatry. That's why you need to be careful about that. So the Roman Catholic Jesus is also another Jesus, just like the Jesus of the Charismatics. Now, I want to clarify this. Not all Charismatics preach another Jesus. Don't get me wrong. There are some who faithfully preach the true gospel and the true Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm talking about the extremists among the Charismatics who preach another Jesus. They, they, for them, preaching this another Jesus is only a business. They make money out of that. So you have the charismatic Jesus, you have the Mormon Jesus, you have the Catholic Jesus. Now the, you also have the liberal Jesus. The Jesus of the liberals. And this Jesus Christ of the liberals is only one example among many others. He was a good man. He was not the son of God or he was not God manifest in the flesh. 
He is only a good example for us to follow. And there are many other such good people whose example you can follow. And the Jesus of the liberals preaches only the Beatitudes, nothing else. He only says how you can be blessed by living in a certain way. So that's the Jesus Christ of the liberals. So there is another Jesus who is being preached in all the world today. Of course, there is the another Jesus of the modern English versions as well. And we have seen that a little bit in the earlier Bible studies. So we will not get into that right now. So there is another Jesus. But Paul also spoke about another spirit and another gospel. And that's the counterfeit spirit and the counterfeit gospel. These are all related to one another. A counterfeit Jesus, a counterfeit spirit and a counterfeit gospel. The charismatics believe that you receive the Holy Spirit as a second blessing after your salvation. Be very careful about this damnable heresy. Be very careful about it because if you uh, wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you at a later point after your salvation, you most probably will receive an unclean spirit or an evil spirit. The reason why I say that is because you receive the Holy Spirit the moment you get saved. The Bible says that if you do not have the Spirit of God, you are not even saved. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. When you got saved, Jesus Christ came into you through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit took you and baptized you into the body of Christ. So if you did not receive the Holy Spirit the moment you were saved, you were never saved at all. The Holy Spirit does not come into you at a later point of time. Remember that. He comes the moment you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verses 12 and 13. That we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now this is the order of salvation. The real order of salvation, not the order of salvation preached by uh, the Calvinists. The real order of salvation given in the Bible is that firstly, you hear the gospel. Hear the gospel of the grace of God. The second one is you believe. Or you trust in Jesus Christ and in the gospel that is preached to you. And then thirdly, you're sealed. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. The moment you are saved. This is the order of salvation. You hear the gospel being preached to you. You trust in Jesus Christ. And then you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. So the spirit that is being preached by the charismatics is another spirit. And be careful about the spirit. Because if it is not the Holy Spirit, then there is only another spirit. That is an evil spirit. If you sit down and pray for the Holy Spirit to come into you, you will receive an evil spirit. Never do that. God gives you the Holy Spirit, not because you ask. Yes, I know the verse where Jesus said uh, that uh, God will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him, but that's in another context. And don't get confused. Don't misinterpret the Scriptures. In this dispensation that we are living in, the moment you are saved, you get the Holy Spirit. That was not how it was in the Old Testament. And what Jesus said is connected to the Old Testament, not to this church age dispensation. In this church age, you get the Spirit the moment you are saved. The Spirit of God dwells in you. If He doesn't dwell in you, you are not saved at all. And then you come to another gospel. Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 to 8, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Paul says, if anyone else preaches another gospel, let him be accursed.
Paul takes this very seriously. So you need to be careful about this another Jesus, another spirit and another gospel which the devil preaches in order to uh, keep people in their sins so that they would die in their sins and go to hell. Be careful brethren, be very careful about this. The true gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. This is the gospel. Christ, Jesus Christ, died for our sins. He died for our sins. He was buried. And he rose again. That is the gospel of the grace of God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, the Bible says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You must remember that when Christ died for our sins, he shed his blood on the cross. He did it for our redemption and to propitiate the anger of God against sinners and sin. And he shed his blood to cleanse us and wash us from our sins. <clears throat> and this blood of Christ is called precious as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's the blood which redeemed us, which purchased us. And salvation is by believing this. That Jesus died for our sins. When he died, when he hung there on the cross, he shed his blood. He, were, he died, he was buried and he rose up again according to the scriptures. And in this church age that we are living in, salvation is by grace through faith, not of works, the Bible says. And if you don't keep this in mind, uh, you can easily be deceived by these false preachers preaching another Jesus, another spirit and another gospel. All these belong to the devil. Remember that he counterfeits Jesus Christ. Not only does he counterfeit the earthly name of the Son of God, which is Jesus, but he also counterfeits Jesus Christ or, or the title that is given to him, that is Christ. He counterfeits Christ. How does he do that? In Acts chapter 4, verse 26, the Bible says, The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. And uh, the apostle is quoting Psalm 2 and verse 2 in Acts chapter 4. Look at Psalm 2 and verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying. So Christ means anointed. Christ means anointed. We can see that in the Old Testament, uh, instead of using the word Christ, the psalmist uses the word anointed and the apostle in Acts chapter 4 uses the word Christ. Christ means anointed or Messiah. It's the same. Now look at Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Lucifer is called the anointed cherub that covereth. If you read in Ezekiel chapter 1 or uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 4, of course, Revelation chapter 4, those four beasts are, cher are seraphim. But in uh, Ezekiel chapter 1 and in Ezekiel 10, you find four cherubim with the throne of God. And when God leaves heaven and comes down to the earth, these four uh, cherubs travel along with God. And Satan is called the anointed cherub. That means Satan was the fifth cherub. Originally there were five cherubs and the fifth one, Lucifer, rebelled against God and fell into sin. 
So he is the fifth sheriff. That's why in the King James Bible, the number five is associated with death. And uh, the King James Bible is really a, the most beautiful book ever to be written on the face of the earth. And I would go so far as to say that the King James Bible is much better in many ways than the originals which we don't have. Well, if the originals existed, probably they would have been the best, but they don't. So right now, they are better than the originals. I know that a lot of you would get mad at this statement, but that's the truth. I can't help it. Well, you can go and study the number 5 in the King James Bible. Uh, like, for example, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 5, you have the death of Adam. Uh, so that's the number 5 associated with death. So also in uh, Acts chapter 5 and verse 5, you have the death of Ananias. And then Romans chapter 5 is the greatest chapter on death in the Bible. So you can go on and on about it. There are so many numbers which have some value to them, which have some significance. And 5 is connected to death. And the fifth cherub has been Lucifer. The Bible says when Lucifer fell into sin and became Satan, he had the power of death in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. And Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, was buried and rose up again, he destroyed that power of the uh, devil which he held over death. But you see, Satan is, before his fall at least, an anointed cherub. And because he was an anointed cherub, you can certainly uh, rest assured that he will use that anointing to deceive people. In other words, he would present himself as a false Christ and he would give a false anointing to people. Again, let me come back to the charismatics. The charismatics always talk about anointing. They say, oh, what an anointed preacher or what anointed preaching, what anointed music. They talk about anointing all the time. That's a false anointing that they are talking about, which comes from a false Christ, who is the devil. As a counterfeit Christ, the devil would certainly give a false anointing. If he could preach a false Jesus, a false spirit, and a false gospel, he would certainly give out a false anointing. When you see these charismatic people saying, oh, I've been anointed by the Holy Spirit, it's not really the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's a false anointing that comes by believing a false Jesus and a false spirit and a false gospel. Look at what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. The Christian is anointed by the Holy Spirit the moment he is born again. In this passage, he says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye, have need, uh, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is there in us as born again Christians. You don't pray for another anointing. You see, you cannot get confused between anointing and unction. And the charismatics get uh, confused between these two things and they seek for an anointing which God does not give. And then immediately the devil comes posing as God, posing as Jesus or posing as Christ and gives them a false anointing. In the Bible, physical objects can be anointed like in the temple. Things were anointed in the Old Testament. The priest was anointed. The king was anointed. Then there is a spiritual anointing like the anointing of Jesus Christ, the anointing of the devil and the anointing of the Christian. But that's a one-time anointing that the Christian gets and it remains with him all his life. You don't look for another anointing. If you do that, there is every possibility that you may get deceived by the false Christ. Do you know what anointing we need today as born-again Christians, especially as those living in the Laodicean church age? Look at Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. <clears throat> I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. 
the Laodicean church today needs that eye salve so that our blind eyes may be anointed that we may see. Christians today are blinded. They are blinded to their own lukewarm condition. They are blinded to the condition of the church in the world. They are blinded to the truth of the scriptures, especially that there is one book that God has preserved for the whole world. In a book in which all his words are there. And that is the King James Bible. The authorized version. And Christians don't see that. So what we need today is an eye salve. So that our eyes may be anointed. So that we may see the truth. So you have a false Jesus. Or another Jesus. Who, uh, who imitates the true Jesus. You have a false Christ. Who imitates the true Christ. Now this false Christ as I've said, comes to people and presents himself as Jesus Christ. Now think about this. The devil even imitates the ministry, the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that uh, Jesus began his ministry when he was 30 years of age. It says in Luke chapter 3 verse 23, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. And we know that, that his ministry on earth was for three and a half years. How do we know that? Well, you can go back and study in John chapter 2 and verse 13. You have a Passover that is mentioned. That's the first Passover mentioned in connection to Jesus' ministry. Then in John chapter 5 verse 1, there was another feast of the Jews, which most probably again was another Passover feast. And then in John chapter 6, there is a third Passover mentioned. In John chapter 7, verse 2, you have the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, in uh, John chapter 6, there was a Passover feast. That would be March, April. And then in the seventh month is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, which would be September, October. So that would add another four, five months. And then in John chapter 10, there is the feast of Jerusalem, uh, the, the feast of dedication at Jerusalem, and it says it was in winter, which would be November, December, another one month, that is six months added. And then in John chapter 12, verse 1, you have another Passover mentioned. So you have four Passovers mentioned, another six months, two other feasts. So we know that Jesus Christ served for three and a half years on the earth. And then he was crucified, he was buried, and he rose up again. What does Satan do? In Revelation chapter 12, verse 14 it says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. The serpent, the dragon, persecutes Israel for three and a half years in the tribulation. Not only that, the Bible says that the Antichrist's ministry on the earth will also be for three and a half years. Look at Revelation chapter 13 and verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So the devil's ministry on the earth will be three and a half years, just like the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what does the devil do in uh, Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, we see that he makes a covenant with many for a week, that is seven years. And in the middle of the week, he breaks his covenant and uh, he causes the worship in the temple of Jerusalem to cease. And that's when he sits in the temple and claims to be God and demands worship. So the first three and a half years of the seven year period of tribulation, the devil or the Antichrist comes as a counterfeit Christ as a counterfeit Christ, and he makes a covenant with Israel as a counterfeit Christ, or the anointed one, or the Messiah. And sadly, the Jews would believe him. But now that is in the tribulation, and that's how the devil continues to counterfeit Jesus Christ. But even today, as we have seen, the main work of the devil is to counterfeit the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the Charismatics, through the Mormons, through the Jehovah's Witnesses, through the Catholics, through every false cult that is there on the earth today. So be very careful. Even the Jesus Christ that is found in most new versions 
is another Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that a person cannot get saved by reading new versions. They can. But that doesn't make them the pure word of God. When it is not pure, then you must be careful about the doctrines that come out of those new versions. All right, so there is another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel, and another Christ. And all these are counterfeit, the devil's counterfeits. And you must be very careful about this. If you have believed in a Jesus Christ who is there only to bless you and to give you prosperity and good health and give you tongues and healings and visions and dreams, you most probably have trusted in a false Jesus Christ. You must come to the one true Jesus Christ of the Holy Scriptures and believe, remember that, He died for your sins. He shed His blood for your sins. He was buried. He rose up again. And if you believe in this gospel and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will be sealed by the Holy Spirit. You will be born again. My prayer is that you would do that now and you would do it immediately. And if you are a born-again Christian deceived by any of these cults, you need to immediately come out of these things and learn the truth from the Holy Scriptures about the true Jesus Christ. Amen.